Hello and welcome to the Rebel 5B and 5C recap. I'm Chaos Blue, and with me today is special guest. Am I really that special? I mean, I, uh, sort of. You're, you're. I'm here. You're the first person who showed up, and that makes you special in my book. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, uh, Chizex is with us. Uh, he is a rogue coach in, Del in uh, Div 1. You want to say anything about anything about that? What are your qualifications? I really don't know why I'm there. Renowned for, renowned for being opinionated about Blood Bowl. So, you know, I think a perfect fit. Yeah, pretty uh -huh. much. Anyway. That's basically my <laughs> qualifications. <laughs> Anyway, uh, with that, with the introductions out of the way, we can get straight into uh, week ten games for Rel Five B. Uh, the first two, yeah, the first game is High Fivers versus Large Skulls, which is an admin game. Uh, so, yep, that's sure adminy. Um, <laughs> nothing to really say about Exciting that. Exciting stuff. Uh, We'll get the other admin game out of the way right away. Uh, it was... Heroes of the Sword Coast versus Valor's Paladins. Vampire's probably pretty happy to have a game off with how their season has been going. Uh, as for the first real game, it's we have Your Lizard Airy versus Hufflepuff Heroes. It looks like the Lizards won 1-0 to zero against the Kepri. Uh, which, considering the records of these two teams, is not too surprising. Uh, Sukari has really been on a roll lately. Watch source leveled up and picked up block. That's nice. Uh, yep, it leveled up into Blodge. Um, otherwise, it, it wasn't really too eventful a game. Uh, it looks like a pretty standard stall out for the lizards, a 1-0 grind. Um, they did, made very few blocks against the Kepri. Well, the Kepri made a lot, so the Kepri was trying to... they made 40% of their pickups. Wow. Uh, yeah, that's... <laughs> that's a lot of dropped balls. Yeah, that's a bit low. Mm-hmm. Uh, no serious injuries were inflicted, and, uh, despite their best efforts, not too many... There wasn't really very many armor breaks in the first place. Or, I say that, well... Oh, no, no, I've gone back too far. Wait. There. Yeah, nine armor breaks against lizards with 54 blocks. Um, that's a little bit below average. I guess it depends what they're hitting on the lizards, though, a lot. But uh, probably they were having trouble knocking it. They were definitely Kepri were clearly having trouble knocking down the the lizards and keeping them down. And uh, Sukari just managed to build on that lead. I would say. Uh, yeah, that's what the stats are telling me at least. Mm -hmm. It looks like he didn't take a lot of blocks, but the ones he took were meaningful. Mm hmm. So, and, probably just trying to stay out of contact as much as possible mm -hmm. and take yep. what hits he could. Yep, that that seems likely. And uh, one expulsion for the Kepri, so, you know, they get the team foul seal of acceptable. Um, if, you want, if you want full approval, you need at least two. Or more, depending on what team you're playing. But one is, like, acceptable. <laughs> I mean... I feel like expulsions aren't what you want. I feel like you want people who can foul without getting kicked out. I mean... I feel like better. I mean, that's what Gengar might say, but have you seen how Gengar plays? <laughs> Gengar has two uh, sneaky get players on, at, on his Kepri team. Gengar just, like, clicks the player and then finds what he can foul. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Incidentally, uh, congratulations on being the first person who is not a member of Team Fowl to be on this recap. <laughs> a very high bar. 
Anyway, uh, let's move on to the next game. It is Organized Crime versus the Rottingham Rockers. And the un... The, not undead. The Nurgle beat the Ogres 2-1. to one. Uh, This was a bit of a rough game for Spigasaurus, the Ogre coach. Um, he lost... Only oh, five Ogre break breaks? That's... Yeah. That's not very, silly for... Five armor breaks, only 22 blocks, and he lost his uh, block piling on Ogre. He, that guy got killed. Not fun. Uh, although it doesn't show up in the statistics, that's... Oh no, yeah, that's sustained. So he wasn't even killed by a block. He was killed by a foul, or he was killed by tripping or the crowd or something. So that's gotta really hurt. <laughs> uh, as as for the counter death, it was just uh, this MVP, which was a little unfortunate, the MVP. But it's just a plain rider, so the rockers hardly even care. Yeah. I mean, he got a new rider. Uh, no, he did not. Ogres have five strength. Uh, oh yeah, it's, it's strength five. Mm -hmm. Duh. Uh, other than that, though, this was act. Other than the the one major death, this was actually a pretty bloodless game. Uh, especially when you consider that Snoutlings were involved. Not a whole whole lot of blocking on either side, but it just worked out a lot better for the Rockers. Like, oh, the organized crime even have more ball possession, so this really paints the picture of the Ogres just, um, just really... Uh, Playing like they're an ogre team? Egg, pretty much, yes. Uh, just bo boneheading at all the wrong times is the picture painted here. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of what happens when you're an ogre team. You don't get a lot of armor breaks. Mm -hmm. You're uh, Although I see that, they only had six bonehead failures, so... Hmm. They must have been failing some other way. Oh, that's 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 actually that's actually genuinely surprising to me, especially with Spicosaurus because he has all six ogres. I think, uh, yeah, no, I'm yeah, pretty sure he does. One of the insane ones that started with all six. Mm hmm. He's yeah, no, he did because he started with no rerolls. So, <laughs> so for him to have only boneheaded six times is a uh, quite a feat, actually. Uh, I kind of wish I'd watched this game now. Like, it would have been sad to watch, because Ogres losing is always sad, if inevitable. But I'm curious, I'm really curious what happened. <laughs> I'm not really sure. Like, I'm even looking at the stats and nothing is really telling me much. Mm-hmm. It shall forever remain a mystery. Oh, if only because we don't predict, we don't actually care enough to go watch the replay later. I mean, there are like what seven matches each game. I guess five of this division, but I'm doing two divisions. That's still like twelve matches each week. I don't. Have, I literally do not have time to watch that many matches every week and especially because sometimes they're played like at the last minute as well uh are you kidding me i don't even watch all the matches in my division exactly right uh usually we have a pretty we have a decent grasp of what happens from the stats though like you get you get used to interpreting them after a while uh having said that the next match is pantheon passers versus you worship chaos you which is, uh, actually a bit of a surprising game. Uh, Pantheon Pathers are pretty, well, they were near the top of the leaderboard, but they've, they've, they haven't even lost any game. They've only lost one game, but they've drawn several important games, and now their position is dropping. Um, as for what happened here, Norse... We're it looks team. like they just got killed and blocked mm -hmm. down. Uh, they did manage to kill a uh, North lineman somehow, 
but they also lost a catcher and a line elf. Uh, not particularly special catchers or line elves, but I mean, it, it all adds up. And this, this is a team that's taken a lot of casualties. Uh, there were no especially interesting level ups either, but um, I mean, <laughs> these these casualty and block stats really just speak for themselves. Yeah. Oh, and we have I've just heard from T self. Uh, he won thirty six to the pickup uh, during the second half. Otherwise, it would have been a. Otherwise, it would have been a probably a 2-1 win. So, Snake Eyes happened. Which, you know, is still sort of L's being L's. Um, I, can, I, still I mean, can't... that's par for course, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. I've lost games that way. I've won games that way. It feels a lot better to be on the winning side. <laughs> but that's Blood Bowl. Uh, next game is Gobble Gobbles versus Lich of Skull Crushers. Gobble Goblins lose. Oh, actually, what? This was a admin game. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what happened with this because uh, the Gobble Gobbles um, were a late addition to the division. So, mm -hmm. and so far they've all been. They've actually been doing really damn well. Uh, although probably they would have lost against Chaos Dwarfs. Let, let's be real. Um, but I'm just surprised that they didn't show up. So I have to wonder what happened with them. Also, this is a dwarf that got two level ups in one game. No, it's not. What is going on there? That's weird. Yeah, it seems like a lot of games were not played in this division this week. Uh, hopefully... Nope, that's also an admin game. Okay, dwarves are good because they actually post in the scheduling thread. And uh, this last one is also an admin game. Yep, that's that's what it is. This is going to be well, very quick. Valorous right? Paladins and the Large Skull are both AI teams. Whereas really famous medics and Gobble Gobbles are actually players who just apparently could not schedule their matches this week. Apparently. Okay. Uh, well, with that said, I was planning on doing a stunty team for my in-depth coverage here, but I don't really want to do it now that they missed their last game, so <laughs> I need to change my plan on the last second. So, uh, are there any teams that catch your eye? Um, don't worry if we've done all of them once, so just pick one and pick one that's not a stunty team, actually. <laughs> And then just go well, for it. The 1750 dwarf team is catching my eye. Okay, pick one that's not a stunty team or that dwarf team. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure we um, did them last week. <laughs> let's see. Let's take a look at High Fivers. Um... <laughs> Not them either, sorry. <laughs> okay, maybe I mean, you need to be more specific. Okay, you know what? We've only we've only done four of them twice, and of those four, one of you have picked two of them and one of them is an ogre team is the ogre team, which I already told you not to pick. So it's just you're oh, picking all the ones we've wolf. already done. I don't want to look at that anymore. Okay, so you know what? Don't pick vampires. And there, we've gone through every single team that is ineligible. Might as well pick an AI player at this <laughs> point. Um, let's, let's take a look at the Norse team. If only because I actually understand Norse. Okay, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. You worship Chaos. They played a game and everything. Shut up. It's their team motto. Block on the Yeti, got Mighty Blow. Yep. Missing an Ulf. Mm -hmm. Missing both Berserkers for the next game. The Ulf died last week, I believe. That is, uh, week nine. Mm. I mean, aside from not having the Ulf and 
being out both preservers, it's a fairly solid team. Mm -hmm. uh, they've been doing pretty well. Uh, they're they're seven two and two in the league, so they're still in the running for playoffs. I believe that puts them in third or fourth place overall. Uh, yeah, puts them in fourth. Okay, yeah. Fourth is third or fourth. Um, they have a really great runner here uh, as well. Ag4. Ag4 blodge your hands. Got his um, kick piece. He's got his dirty player. They're... The next game is going to be a little rough because just they're missing a lot of positionals. But uh, yeah. I'm not sure who they're it's... playing next week. Let me let me just check. Uh, they... Or this week, I suppose. This um, week, so... It is. Looks oh, like actually, the they've already they've already played this game. Their game this week. Yeah, they, the next game is against the okay. Lizards on week twelve. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, that that will be a rough game uh, for them. Yeah. Uh, but if they can come out of it with relatively unscathed, uh, hmm. yeah, against Lizards, actually, it's going to be hard for them to get the playoff spot, but. Miracles can happen, and they still have the chance to act as a spoiler. And hey, they've been doing really well. So even if they don't get the playoffs, they're mm -hmm. gonna they're gonna go up in division for sure. With a fairly solid team, I mean, mm -hmm. it's kind of annoying to have the movement down on Berserker. You kind of want those a bit more mobile, but I mean, it's only one level. You can cycle mm. it at exactly. some point. Yeah, like. This is easy to just cycle it during the Devastational. And probably he's going to be looking to pick up his... Replace his dead ult after the Lizard game. That would be my expectation. Yeah. I mean, he can't afford it now. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, like... like not like only ten, I want to say? Not only is this a good uh, Norse team, but it's a really lean Norse team. There's no, there's no bloat here. Just scary it's the Yeti. the exact opposite of Ornenstein. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, uh, any yeah. final thoughts? I mean, it's... Just a good team. That's... Yeah, I mean... Not much else to say there. I mean, he could go with a second dirty player, but he's got... What is this? Six linemen... Eight, ten, that's eleven, I believe, on roster, counting the MNGs. Mm -hmm. So he'd go up to twelve players once he gets the ult back. Mm -hmm. That's not bad. Like, ideally, you'd probably want to go up to thirteen at some point as Norris. Uh, yeah, I think I think thirteen is a good number for a lot of teams. Norris among them. Yeah, I mean, it's a team that kind of needs the foul mm -hmm. to keep up in attrition. Uh, maybe a little less so on this one, Yeti just because the Yeti to... is that good. But uh, yeah. still, there's definitely room for fouling for Norse. Uh, I hear an animal trying to get inside, so give me just... <sighs> okay. I am back. Okay. Uh, and on that note, uh, let's go to the team I'm going to cover, which is going to be, I have decided, you're a lizardary! Which, uh, okay, this is the one with great names. Got it. Um, so, uh, there's some good source on here. Plus strength source is amazing. Lodge source is really good. And block might ability tackle source is great. Uh, the Skinks are not really super developed, but that's a good thing, actually, because it means they aren't bloating up the team value. You don't want a Skink to be developed unless it has amazing roles. So unless it has, like, a stat-ups and doubles and just a ton of that stuff. Other than yeah. that... This is looking like a fairly good wizard team. You've got mm -hmm. almost as much development on your source as you do Skinks. And you've got your killer piece that might get piling on, it might not. Some people don't like it. You've got your bodge piece that can throw up into that card, stamp mm -hmm. firm, and just be annoying. 
You've got your silly strength five source that is going to become a second Croxagore. Yep. And uh, speaking of the Croxagore, I just want to go over the history of this thing. This is the th- team's third Croxagore. Uh, the first oh, wow. one, the first one had block. It was a Bloxagore, and it got murdered. Uh, just straight murdered. The second one was you bought to replace that first one almost immediately, and in its first game, it got armor busted. Uh, stuck around for a little while, leveled up pretty quickly. Uh, then it got, I want to say a niggle. Then it got fired. Yeah. And, and he had a, Sakari had at least one game with just no crocs in there because, well, no, he must have had more than one because the second one got injured more than once. So he had several games with no crocs. Uh, and then, and now finally he has the third one, which I think has played, uh, yeah, it's played just one game. It was the game from this week. Uh, in and which it's despite still... Despite all that, he's 8-0-2 this yeah. season. Yeah, uh, he's, Stukari is... has been doing really well this season. Uh, it was a little rough for him in the middle, because he, he had a couple games in a row where he took a lot of, uh, where he took a lot of attrition, but he managed to bounce right back from that and not even drop too many games because of it. Yeah. I mean, the only thing I'd like to see is maybe a spare skink pretty soon, but with the way his Croxagores have been mm-hmm. dying, he's not really had the money for that. Uh, that's exactly the thing, right? Like, lizards are really great for min-maxing your TV by hiring and firing skinks, but you can only do that if you're not losing your AV9 players. Yeah. It's getting to that point where he's going to have to cycle these diving tackle players pretty mm-hmm. soon if he's not careful. It yeah, does it, come a point where you try to avoid scoring on certain players as a lizard team. Yeah. Usually, after you hit level 3, if it doesn't roll a double or a stat up, that's when you cycle it. It's just not yep. worth keeping there. Unless you're wave and you can just do magic things because you're fucking wave. Um, anyway, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. Um, yeah. We already, whoops, that's too far back. We already mentioned that this team is in third place overall. Uh, they are playing the Norse next uh, week, which I think they have a decent chance of shot at winning. And then in week 13, it is against really famous medics, which um, I think they definitely, I think they, yeah, I think they have a decent chance of getting into that number two playoff spot. Uh, it does. It will ultimately come down to whether or not the Dorfs or the Rockers drop a game. But if they do, Sakari is going to be primed to jump in there. Uh, there is not a lot of block on that Chaos team. No, there is not. <laughs> so uh, that just leaves uh, looking at a game or two from this week. Uh, hmm. Let's see... Honestly, the game that interests me most has already been played, so that makes it a little rough. Uh, oh wait, he hasn't played his game from Sakura hasn't played his game from this week either, actually. So he may genuinely jump up into second place if he wins that. Uh, let's look at that game. Actually, here's the Sword Coast, which is a vampire team versus your Lizardary. Um, I think I think I'm gonna have to like. This is a harder match for lizards than it looks, because Saurus are not really great against vampires. But at the same time, they're vampires, so I think I have to give an advantage to Sakari on this. Uh, I don't know, this might come down to dice and pure coaching skill. I mean, it's 6 strength 4 versus 6 strength 4, the difference being the vampires are more mobile and, and gaze they're they could potentially cause a lot of disruptions just using that. Of course, vampires aren't more mobile so much as they are more mobile with air quotes. Um, having to drag a thrall around means that they are not always actually more mobile. Uh, but Hypnotic Gaze That's does true. work against, um, well, anything, really. But, uh, 
it is a big weak point for lizards when you start having a lot of your source being people are being able to just run right past them and vampires can do that quite easily so uh there is a chance there for an upset uh yeah, it's probably just going to come down to a combination mm. of dice and coaching skill how each team plays around hypnotic gaze and mm -hmm. whether or not the board rust is just going to eat frolls mm. for the entire game and uh yeah so and uh the other matchup that i'm gonna look at really quickly is uh lich's skull crushers versus hufflepuff heroes uh chaos dwarves versus kepri by the way, I just want to say, we, we've said this before, but I love it that we have two Harry Potter-themed teams in the same division. <laughs> Although, Sukari did a little more work in that regard. Hufflepuff Heroes does not have good name, Just has a bunch of default names. Well, but they can't, all, a disappointment. they can't all be perfect. Uh, yeah, so, um, I give advantage Skull Crushers, because they're basically built to murder things, uh, but, uh... They have Mighty Blow on practically every single piece. Yes, exactly. But it is against Kepri, so that can always go wrong. Like, they will definitely break armor, but it only matters if... It only matters if the skeletons don't keep coming back. <laughs> AV8 Tomb Guardian, that's a big target. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, having said all this, uh, Hufflepuff Heroes are at the bottom of the uh, division. They are in 100% just de team development mode. Uh, but they could easily do a lot of damage to the Chaos Dwarf team if the if uh, the Lich that lies is not careful. Yeah. And, uh, it, what, well, the interesting here is less about where the ball goes and more about what they do to each other. I mean, it's Camry versus Chaos Dwarves. Mm -hmm. Both teams tend to forget about the ball at a certain point. Uh, that is true. Okay, uh, and on that note, uh, let's jump over to 5C. Oh wow, they've already played a, a bunch of games from this week. It's only Thursday, come on, I say having just played my game. Um, right. Are you kidding me? I don't know, 1's usually done by now. <laughs> yeah, but that's real 1, it doesn't count. Uh, so, first game is Prona Party versus Frozen Dead North. Which is pro elves versus necromantic, I think. That's three expulsions. Yep, that is indeed three expulsions. Um, let's see. So a lot of stuff happened in this game. This was an exciting game. Uh, one of those expulsions, first of all, is Hack and Slash. He was induced by Frozen Dead North. Um. But the other two were just straight up fouls. As for casualties, we can see the blocks are fairly even, with uh, three KOs from inflicted by Prona Party, and two injuries and a kill inflicted by Fro Frozen Dead North. However, <laughs> that does not tell the full story. Um, D Sharp managed to miss the next game, he, one of his werewolves. Uh, who also leveled up in this game, so he must have, like, scored or killed something before he presumably tripped. Uh, and he even, t and what's more, that same werewolf also rolled a 10 on level up and took plus movement. Uh, Pro in the party, on the other hand, is, uh, okay, wait, he is, wait a second. Seriously, he has three casualties from tripping? I guess probably the, probably some of that is Fallon. <laughs> some of that has got to be Fallon, because that doesn't show on the injuries, yeah, I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing, <laughs> like, three dead wine elves, basically. Uh, yeah, I was going to get to that. Um, in typical Soul of Dragonfire fashion, he a line elf got killed, and his kick line elf got minus strength, and another a third line elf got niggled. 
and his thrower got niggled a second time, so now he has a thrower that is double niggle. Unless he's fired him finally. But uh, this is this is Soul of Dragonfire, so I assume not, because he's crazy. He's not very good at keeping his players alive, so he has to work with what he has. I mean, I can't argue with his results, because he's at the top of the division, no. but he's he, he, he at the rate he's going... He is going to go be going into playoff with a 10 loner team. I mean, it's an elf team. That's kind of what they do. I mean, no. Elves go into play playoffs with like five or six players. He He's going to be lucky to have five or six healthy players. Um, anyway... Uh, oh, you know what, though? Uh, he d There is something unusual here, though. He only won by one point. Almost every game he wins, he wins. He has won by more... This is only the second game all season where he has won by less than two points. Impressive. So, uh, he must have been... Str he must have been struggling against the Necromantic team. Uh, yeah. So that's a thing. Oh, and, uh, yeah. Okay, next game. Say hello to my little friends versus, uh, y wh wh why don't you try to say this for me? The Cantankerous Cretaceans. Cretaceans, rather. Words. Okay, you're better at tongue twisters than me. It's either meant to be crustaceans or Cretaceans. I'm going to say it is Cretaceans. I believe it is Cretaceans. Yes. I just can't say it. It's it's too many consonants, and it just doesn't come. My tongue, <laughs> my tongue just turns I into knots in my mouth. I think that was intended. I think so as well. Uh, but I am weak against tongue twisters. Uh, so this is a three-one win for the lizards against the goblins, which is not too terribly surprising. That death is just a rookie goblin, so nothing of value was lost. Um. The inducements in this game, uh, in addition to however many bribes, were Fungus and Nubla for the goblins. Uh, so, Negative Pro really likes those secret weapons, and I I can hardly blame them. Uh, they're great. I mean, that's the point of playing <laughs> goblins, isn't it? Blocks are actually more even than you might expect. Uh, Surprisingly. I'm guessing that the Cretaceans have a Tackler. Based on this, uh, because usually people struggle, usually teams struggle to get a lot of blocks on goblins. Either they have no tackle and they can't knock them down, or they have a lot of tackle and th the goblins are all gone. And then e in either case, you have a really low block count. Uh, so, it looks like he's got quite a lot of block and he's got a block tackle mm -hmm. piece. So uh, that this that is probably helped a lot. that this is so even also tells me that the goblins actually were hitting back a lot, uh, although they only had limited success in doing so. Unfortunately, them's the breaks, especially when you're playing goblin. Nabla, of course, got MVP, which is unfortunate. But hey, the loner skink also got MVP. So, so the MVP was useless for everyone. Yeah. I, I mean, you, at don't least, you don't expect to win when you're mm -hmm. playing goblins. At least I assume that this skink was not hired. And and uh, yeah, I, I I would have to agree with you. Usually, if I'm when I'm playing goblins, I'm hoping like draw at best. <laughs> Winning is a bonus. It really is. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's that game. Next up is Mary Ballers versus no, actually that's an admin game. Mary Ballers is admin, so Corn's Glory gets the admin win. Uh, next up is Shrek All Stars versus Grungy Desserts with the Ogres win 1 0! And it is a glorious day, but it is also a costly day. Ravenpo lost his second block ogre in this game. He still has what? His blodge block ogre because he rolls nothing but doubles on his ogres, what? apparently. But. Yeah, he has had three block overs and two of them have died. Um, he also took a lot of injuries on the snotlings, but that's sort of like a who cares situation. Uh, lots of SPP for the Nurgle team. 
But again, like, they're snotlings. Raven Poe doesn't care about snotlings. No one cares about snotlings. Even the snotlings don't care about snotlings. Otherwise, they wouldn't be playing on the damn ogre team. <laughs> they know what their lot in no, life they is. They don't really matter. Uh, having said that, the they're one... just sort of there mm. so that you can have 11 players. Having said that, the one touchdown was from a snotling. So, having not seen this game, that does suggest that a throw teammate shenanigans happened here. Uh, which is always a spectacle to see. The game is probably still available in the replay, so, you know, if you want to see amazing ogres, go watch it. Um. The, the Nargle managed to inflict seven injuries, so they did something. Uh, yep, they injured a lot of snotlings and also killed an ogre. That's pretty much what happened here. And all those injuries are from blocks as well, so you know, they gotta be pretty happy about that. Yeah. I'm person. I'm just happy, ecstatic even, that Ogre's won. Um, it's actually a really close race right now for, um, for the Stunty Cup position, and most of the teams that are really? in that- most of the teams that are in that race are Ogre teams. There's like one or two goblins, and the rest are ogres. <laughs> and uh, Rivenpo is—I want to say he's one of the one of them. Uh, Sound right. But uh, we'll go over that later. Um, the next game on our list is Iron's Forge versus Le Grand Bleu, which was a two-two draw. Dwarves versus Wood Elves, which you know. It happens. Um, yeah. So, Iron Sword actually took some damage in this game. <laughs> they induced Flint, the chainsaw guy, who I have to assume just immediately tried to use his chainsaw, excuse me, on the tree, because the Iron Sword took a n niggle on a... Wait, no. I thought Flint got injured as well, but apparently not. I did not write that in my notes, so I... I was just talking out of my ass, apparently. Um, but, uh, having said that, I don't think Flint really did much either. <laughs> there was, uh, well, there was one ca extra casualty sustained, so he might have fouled someone and caused an injury that way. But, uh, yeah, Iron Sforge took a niggle on a longbeard and, and a miss next game on two more longbeards. So he actually took some damage in this game. Fortunately, he's dwarves, so he doesn't care if he's missing longbeards, because a loner longbeard is almost as good as a regular longbeard. Um, yeah. As for the Grand Bleu, the only serious damage they took was a miss next game on their Movement 9 War Dancer. So their next game might be a little bit rougher, but they're probably fine as well. Uh, they had very little ball control, though, so it's kind of amazing that they managed to score twice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what else. Mm -hmm. They score in two turns, and... Yeah, but against dwarves, you're not supposed to score in two turns. You're supposed to delay just enough so that they can't score back on you. Uh, except against me, that doesn't work against me. <laughs> or so I say. But, uh, against other dwarves, it is genuinely a really good plan. Uh, and here's why. He had 10 KOs. That would do it. That would do it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's kind of hard to stall when you don't have players. Mm-hmm. Uh, moving on, we have Jazz Poison versus the Doom Anvils, which is a 1-0 draw, or 1-0 win, rather, for the um, Underworld. And against uh, Chaos Wars, for that matter. So that's that's not an easy win. MVP went on the best player on the team, the Agi 4 under World Goblin. Um, w only one SVP from level up, at which point you take big hands, and then prob probably big hands, and then just the ball is never safe. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I, I guess there's other options options of the big hands. Like, there's so much you can do with this goblin. But I would probably take big hands. Um, in terms of 
how the game went. Highball possession for the Chaos Wars, which is pretty typical. But they didn't manage to actually score, so they were probably stalled out by the Underworld. Blocks are relatively even. And, uh... Injuries and KOs are also pretty even, actually. Uh, there was no permanent injuries from this game, so... Uh, not... There was a nickeled goblin. Okay. But who cares? There was no permanent injuries that count. A, a niggle on a stunty player is a total non... is a total non-issue. You just fire it. It doesn't matter. On a, on a rookie stunty player, anyway. Like, it's so cheap to replace, it just really doesn't matter at all. Uh, but yeah. yeah. So that was this game, and that was great. Too bad Jazz Poison doesn't count for the Stunted Cup. Because they would totally have it. But, you know, I mean, Underworld, so I guess that's fair. Um, yeah. Lastly, we have Kepri do it. Yes, we can! Versus the Royal Rumble Boys. Um, and Kepri do it wins. Again. I think they have they have not lost a game all season, so Ooh, they that's a tomb to be expected. Yeah, MVP on a Tomb Guardian, that's great. And it got block. That's amazing. That is really amazing. Uh, having said that, he did also lose a Tomb Guardian in this game. He, he has one death. That is a Tomb Guardian. Uh, I bl I think it was a rookie Tomb Guardian, but it was a Tomb Guardian. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that always sucks. Uh, hot, lots of blocks, lots of armor breaks, not too many actual injuries inflicted. Uh, no injuries inflicted by the Kepri. In fact, all KOs. Uh, but the injuries that the Nurgle did didn't stop, didn't help them score, clearly. Uh, that's just how it goes sometimes. Uh, but you know what? They're coming out of this with the high ground of having killed a Tomb Guardian and also gotten more SPP, despite losing. So you know they have that going for them. Oh, you know what? The Tomb Guardian that got MVP and leveled up and got block is named Bob mm -hmm. the Blocker. Yes. That's actually pretty great. <laughs> That is amazing. He's only been here for three matches as well. Yeah, uh... McMackey has taken some casualties as he's been going along, but no one has been able to stop him, really. So, he hasn't taken so much that he's started, that he's collapsed in on himself either. Which I... He's top of the division at the moment. Yeah. I mean, that's what happens when you don't lose a single game. And also, when you only draw a single game. Uh, and that went through all the matches for this week. So uh, let's look at teams. Uh, this, I can use my pick for this division this time. So go ahead and think of one while I'm doing this. Or while we're d going over it. Uh, because I'm going over Shrek All-Stars. All-Star, but the ly all the lyrics are ogres. Uh, what? Wait, no. The lyrics are gone. <laughs> ah, well, no, some of them are still here. He says all the lyrics are ogres, but that's actually not true. All of the lyrics are actually snotlings. So, uh, yeah. This is Raven Poe's Ogre Team. It is, like, actually doing pretty well by Ogre Team standards. He has a Blodge Ogre. He has two Break Tackle guys. One of which has plus agility. And one of which has... Because of course it does. Uh, actually, that's a new level up. That's I don't know when he did this. When he took break tackle on this ogre, I'm, I I understand it, but I'm also surprised by it. <laughs> <laughs> eh, it's a little weird, but I, at the same time, what are you gonna give an ogre? I mean, it, it. I mean, guard pylon. I mean, that's sort of the thing, right? Like, it's weird because it's an Agi 3 Ogre, but it still makes sense because he still has Strength 5, you know? Like, he can still use Break Tackle. And uh, this is probably one of his ball carriers as well, so... At least I mean, in think theory. About it this way. He's more likely to dodge out without using Break Tackle, so he can use Break Tackle for a harder dodge. 
So it opens up all kinds of silly shenanigans, blitzes. Yeah. Exactly. And at the end of the day, you're right. It's like, what else do you give him on a normal? There aren't actually that many good options <laughs> if your plan is to have him carry the ball. Even if your plan isn't to have him carry the ball, you're still probably better taking break tackle first with the with anything you're going to build agility 3 into. Uh, he has lost some ogres, though. Like I said earlier, he lost a his second block ogre this time. His first one was a pylon block ogre who, who was niggled and then killed. Uh, pretty sure he got fouled. Um, he's taking a lot of damage on his snotlings, which he pro which I have to imagine he doesn't really care about. Um, I mean, they're snotlings. They are sort of there to die. Exactly. Uh, he's keeping his movement busted ones because, I mean, I, it just doesn't really matter that much. But I have to imagine he's going to fire his... He's going to fire and replace. Well, maybe not replace, but he, I imagine he's going to fire the Agi 2 one. Simply because, um, well, because that actually affects how they dodge. Which is more important. But, uh, so, you haven't, you haven't bit on the lyrics. <laughs> I was kind of hoping you would. <laughs> It's... I just, I'm trying to ignore it. <laughs> I mean, it's just as well. Literally every time we go in, we go to Shrek All-Stars with Gengar, he points it out every single time. Uh, which I sort of love. But also, I, it's every single I time. Imagined. Uh, I so, imagined he would. So yeah. Uh, obviously, Shrek All-Stars is not very high on the ladder. It is an ogre team. I think they are it second from last, maybe third from last. Um, I know the last player for sure, the last team for sure is. So, yeah, but they have four wins. Yeah, they're third from last. They have four wins, which puts them doing really damn well in the uh, in the competition for the Stunty Cup. Now, one of these wins, I'm pretty sure, is an admin win. It is worth saying. So, that's not necessarily going to count for them. Uh, yeah, Mary Ball is right here. That is an admin win, and that doesn't count. But they still have three wins, and that is a lot for a stunty team. That puts them right that's near the top of the... Of wins, that puts... Hmm? Sorry? I said that's an impressive amount of wins for Hogers. Yeah, uh, that puts them right near the top of the Stunty Cup competition. And actually, even though the um, even though the admin win doesn't count for as a win, it still removes itself, so it makes their other wins worth more. That's the way the Stunty Cup is calculated. <laughs> Just so you know. At least I think it is. That's how Hargzord ex sort of explained it to me, but it was a long time ago, so maybe... So maybe I'm misremembering it. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, so you're just making stuff up at this point. I'm not just making stuff up, but I might be remembering wrong. Anyway, uh, what team would you like to look at? Um, are there any ones I should avoid saying this time? Uh, once again, avoid the stunty teams. Uh... Including, yeah, avoid anything with stunty players in it. And also avoid the dwarves. You just don't like dwarves. Uh, it's more that we've already done all the dwarves. <laughs> I've done all, I've made sure that all the dwarves and stunty players have already been covered, is what um... has happened. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's take a look at let's take a look at this lizard team. Uh, okay. Let's take a look at them. Damn kids, get off my supercontinent! If only because I actually really like this naming scheme. Yeah, I like it a lot better when I get into the team names and I d or when I get into the player names and I don't need to look at the team name. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So, uh, this is a, what I feel is a pretty standard lizard team. The Saurus have all mostly been taking block first, except for the one who has a mighty blow. He has a little bit of tackle, he has a little bit of guard. Crox has not rolled doubles, unfortunately. Not everyone can have a block score. But, you know, on the other hand, you only get one, and then it dies, and then you don't get one again. So, maybe it's better to save it for later anyway. Uh, he also has the movement 9 skink, which is great. It is almost a natural yeah. one-turner. It does have a niggle, but I think you still keep you the keep skink. It anyway. It's just, it's worth uh. having. But you probably do want to take a 12th skink so that you don't need to put him on the field unless you have to. That's just what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. He's even got the money to do it. Mm -hmm. He might be saving in case, like, a Saurus dies in a coming game. Uh, but... that's, yeah, that's a possibility. And uh, at the same time, uh, he's actually really trim as well. Like, there's no bloat whatsoever on this team. Yeah. So, he's I think he can definitely... Only got the two skinks mm -hmm. with anything, and he's got... The majority of his development mm -hmm. on, a, on Saurus, which is kind of what you want to see as a lizard team. Yeah. And, uh, like, as long as he doesn't lose a player next uh, game, he's in a really... His team is looking really good. Yeah. Um, he has the Squig Sandwich Kiosk for a stadium enhancement as well. I wonder if... I don't remember if he had this before. He might have bought this quite recently, actually. Um, Surprising he would go for that over Weather Dome. Yeah, for for Lizards, Weather Dome is popular, but this sort of tells me that, well, either he just doesn't, really doesn't like Throw Rock, because there's some coaches who do that, where I don't like this field effect so much that I'm going to specifically buy it just so I don't need to deal with it. Uh, even though there's other bad field, field effects, no, I hate that one the most. Which, Throw a Rock is definitely a popular contender for that. But I look at this and I also go, you know, he probably doesn't want to get fouled. Uh, I mean... AV9 on the players that you would want to foul still takes a significant amount to bring him down and that takes everyone out of position. If anything, I like the Get the Ref as a wizard team because that allows mm -hmm. me to foul. Uh, because, I, I mean, you don't want to foul that mm. often with skinks, because then suddenly you're out of skinks. I tend to agree with you, but I can definitely see how someone might think otherwise. Of course, I am just making a broad assumption here. But, <laughs> yeah. in, in any case. But still. It could just be that he just doesn't like getting hit by rocks turn one. Yeah, that's very possible. Uh, as for it's record... Fun and interactive um, rock. Busunda is actually near the top of the division with 3, 1, and 2. I want to say that puts him in third place. He might be tied for second, though. Uh, yep, puts him in third. Mm -hmm. So uh, he's a real playoff contender. I don't think anyone... Like, McMackey is locked into playoffs at this point, as far as I'm concerned. But there's still definitely some competition for that second place spot. And uh, Busunda has a chance. He has a chance to get it. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, I mean, not really. It's okay. Then. We covered pretty much everything there. Uh, quick jump over to the leaderboard. Uh, yep, the lizardmen are in third. Elf Union is in second, with their only loss being to the first place team. Uh, they're only one point behind them though but they're also coming apart at the seams I, I think it's likely that these two it is probably the most likely scenario that these two teams will be going to playoffs like I, I it, that is by far the most likely scenario here yeah, I think with a two win lead it's at this late it's mm -hmm. yeah, a like, significant lead the only team that can even po possibly unshelf them at this point uh, well, if they drop, like, both games, then Le Grand Bleu could do it. But realistically, the only one who even has a chance is Basunda. Hmm. So, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see how it plays out. The Wizards do play the Pro Elves, though. Uh, yeah, I think that is coming up, isn't it? 
Yeah, so that could be fairly deciding. Mm -hmm. It could happen. Uh, anyway, let's just uh, take two, a really quick look at a couple of uh, games from this week. Um, Kepri are actually getting their bye week this week. That's there. That's just crazy. Uh, I The game I'm interested in is Jazz Poison versus Shrek All-Stars. Underworld versus Ogres. That'll be a fun game to watch. <laughs> yeah. Lots of stunty players running around. De definitely advantage to Underworld because they're not an Ogre team, so that gives them the advantage by default, pretty much. Uh, but this this could be an exciting game. And honestly, there's enough squishy players on Jazz Poison that if Ravenpoe if Ravenpo rolls well, he does have a chance of stealing a game, or even a draw. Which, I mean, a draw for him would actually be huge. Because it would really help him lock time, in his uh, advantage in the Stunty Cup race. At the same time, the uh, Underworld have two Claw Mighty Bow players, so... Mm -hmm. That could be the deciding factor. It could have that. Uh, and uh, as for our other game, the... You know what? I'm actually more interested... Pro Owner Party is probably more important for playoffs, but I'm actually more interested in the Grand Blue versus Ken, the Lizards. That's third place versus fourth, and uh, it's it's almost like a hmm. Well, yeah, it is a comp It is the match between the two teams who are not in for in playoff position. It is the the match between the two teams who couldn't quite make it, and I think I think it'll be a really good match. Uh, plus, Wood Elves versus Lizardmen is actually a pretty balanced match, at least in terms of scoring. I mean, injury-wise, it tilts towards the Lizardmen, but Lizards, it's hard for both of these teams to stop each other. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty accurate. Lizards just get outran mm -hmm. and then just sort of turn around and mm -hmm. roll over the Lizards in the other direction. Yeah. So, this might not be the most important match, but I think it'll be a very exciting one. And, uh, in fairness, and it is... The wizard team, oh. If the Wizard team does want to manage to take that spot, mm -hmm. he has to win this game. Yes, exactly. If he does want the chance at the playoffs, he does He does need an opponent, one of his uh, competition to drop a game, but he also needs to win every single game if he's going to do it. It helps that he still has to play mm -hmm. the pro elves that are above him. But yeah. he does have to win all three games, I'd and, say. And uh, I got to really feel for him because I was in a ver position very similar to this last season. <laughs> so similar to his. It's not fun. It, it isn't. Where it's like, oh, I'm doing so well. And if I was in a different division, I'd be, be in playoffs. But no, the person in first place is just perfect. So I can't <laughs> possibly beat them. Uh, so yeah, uh, with that, we are so, done. Yeah, I believe... I believe Soul of Dragonfire was a Div 1 coach for a while, so... Uh, he, I know he's been around for a while. Uh, he, I think he I'm was pretty sure he one. played Norse. I think he was the Div 1 Norse, and he before this, off because his and, team imploded. Yeah, he has a bit of a reputation for imploding his team. <laughs> and I can sort of see why. I can sort of see how that happened. <laughs> uh, anyway. It's still happening. Anyway, uh, we're going to stop off here. So, uh... I hope this was great for everyone watching, and uh, have a good week, I guess. <laughs> Bye. Adios.